Hello and welcome to episode 227 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by the Dexcom G6 Continuous Glucose Monitor, by Omnipod and their tubeless insulin pump, by Real Good Foods, and of course, Dancing for Diabetes. You can go to Dexcom.com forward slash juice box, myomnipod.com forward slash juice box, dancing the number four diabetes.com or realgoodfoods.com to find out more about the sponsors. Now, when you go to realgoodfoods.com and you place an order, use the offer code JUICEBOX to save 20% on your entire purchase. As you well know, nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. And you should always consult a physician before becoming bold with insulin or making any changes to your health care plan. Today's guest is Katie D. Simone, and you're going to want to hold on to something because I think what I'm about to say next is going to take you by surprise. But one of our listeners, Gina, browbeat me, browbeat me online into trying the loop now that it's available for the Omnipod. And so I got Katie on the show because she is about the loopiest person. That doesn't sound right. She's really entrenched in the world of looping. She's not loopy. She's actually delightful. Anyway, Katie came on. She explained to me everything about looping. And I had a bit of an epiphany that I thought it might actually help me help you. So I said, all right, let me try it. So sit back and relax and listen to the conversation that I had with Katie that made me think, all right, I'll give this a shot. My name is Katie D. Simone, and I work for Tidepool now, and I'm also part of the DIY Loop group. So um, I have a little bit of dual hats in that respect, and so sometimes I try and clarify which hat I have on. Which one are we wearing today? Both? One? I am imagining probably mostly the DIY Katie hat um, because Loop has had a very exciting announcement this week that it now uh, integrates with the Omnipod. Ah, okay. So if you have to change hats, just make an announcement before it happens. Yep, will do. Katie, I'm going to give you a tiny bit of background on me and what I think is probably the feeling of more people than should be, um, and and then we'll move from there. So my daughter is going to be 15 this summer. She's been using an Omnipod since she was four. And um, because I think greatly, because of the things we talk about here on this podcast, her A1C has been between 5.2 and 6.2 for over five years. She doesn't have any um, uh, diet restrictions whatsoever, and we just kind of, you know, figured it out a little bit. But I also want to stay... I want to ride the wave, you know, on the crest of the wave. I don't want it to crash down and then just be, you know, going back out to sea when I'm like, what's the loop? So I, I'm, I'm excited. I've said before that the documentation scares the heck out of me, um, <laughs> but I got cajoled harshly by somebody online uh, and they were like, try it, just try it, just try it. And then she finally said to me, look, buy the Riley link and if you don't like it, I'll buy it from you. So, Gina, this episode is for you and for <laughs> everyone else. I think we need to just first kind of, as simply as possible, let what loop means make sense to people. Can you do that? Yes. Basically, loop does what most of the general population, I call them muggles, the people who aren't living with T1D, um, what most of the muggle population thinks happens for T1D, um, that's what Loop does, is that they see, if you explain to a muggle that you have a continuous glucose monitor that provides you information about your blood sugar every five minutes, and you tell them that you dose insulin off your insulin pump based on your blood sugars, they assume that those two systems talk to each other. And that's, as we all know, pretty much not the case on any commercial product these days, with the exception of um, very recent developments, relatively speaking, of the 670 and basal IQ, which does half of that equation. It responds to low blood sugars. So what looping does is that 
it takes that and closes the loop. In other words, your insulin dosing will actually be based on CGM's data without having your brain involved in that or your fingers involved in making pump button pushes. So in the simplest form, that's what it's doing, is that if at any given time you would have looked at your CGM data and known that you had eaten and thought, maybe I should give a little bit more or I should suspend um, or I should decrease my insulin, that's what loop is doing for you. Okay. Now, where loop itself, with the capital L, um, as opposed to a little case L of sort of the general concept of looping, what loop app itself does is that it puts all of that into a really simple, wonderful interface of an iPhone app. In all the traditional ways you love Apple products for their ease of use that you um, can just look at it and it makes sense for what you're looking at, that's what Loop is. Um, it's an iPhone app that sits on your app where you can easily enter all of the information about the food you're eating, the boluses you want to give, where you're headed, what your settings are. It's basically all moved off of a device that you have to fetch out from underneath your sweater or under your dress. Um, it's all now on your iPhone where you interact with most of your day anyway. Um, and for my kid, the iPhone is almost an extension of her hand because she's 16. She is on Spotify and Instagram and all of those other kinds of things. And so bolusing from her phone is a really natural place to put her diabetes management. Yeah. Um, for adult users, most of them are really psyched on the watch for bolusing and entering carbs. It's super discreet. You can do it at a professional meeting and nobody's going to ask you, are you being rude or somehow ignoring things? You can take care of it all on the watch. So most of you know that I'm speaking at the Dancing for Diabetes Touched by Type 1 event on May 18th in Orlando, Florida. If you're in the area and you'd like to come, I don't think it's too late. Check out dancingfordiabetes.com. But if you can't make it, Dancing for Diabetes is like, I don't know, auctioning me off or something. All you have to do is go to dancingfordiabetes.com, hit the donate tab, make a suggested donation of $10. And when you do that, your name will be like in a hat. I'm going to pull from that hat while I'm down there on the 18th, and I'm going to pull out three names. Two of those names, I'm going to have a 45-minute phone call with you. And one lucky name, one-hour phone call, and a 30-minute follow-up. And if you don't want to use the phone, we could FaceTime. We could Skype. I could yell out the window, smoke signals. I don't care. Now, listen, if you don't want to talk to me on the phone, I appreciate that. But don't embarrass me, okay? You hear what I'm saying? You guys got to get on there and do this so I don't look like a schmuck. They're expected numbers out of this. The whole, like, Scott phone call thing. Imagine if three of you do this. I'm going to look like an idiot. All right, so don't do it for me. Don't do it for the cute kids dancing for diabetes. Oh, you know what? Do it for me. Do it for me so that I don't look like an idiot. To have your name included in this opportunity, go to dancingfordiabetes.com. Click on the Donate Today button between now and May 17th, 2019. Make a suggested donation of $10, and be sure to mention Juice Box in the notes. If you don't have internet access, or flat out just don't want to make a donation, but you still want to submit your name, you can do it by mail. I mean, God bless you if you're going to do that. That's like a stamp and an envelope, and I don't know what you're even writing there, juice box and a thing, and it's got to get there by the side. I mean, do it if you want. I'm just saying, whew, a lot of work. I hope to see you on the 18th, but if I don't, I hope we can talk. In its very basic form, all the things that we all sit around thinking are always simplified for us, right? Like I think, and much like most people, like artificial pancreas will come one day. And what that means is my glucose monitor will talk to my insulin pump and it will make decisions for me and I won't have to think about it. And that really is this. It's this in real life. It's it's your, right now it's Dexcom, right? You, you Loop works with Dexcom CGM? Correct. Loop works with all the Dexcom CGMs, uh, so long as the G4 has share capability. Okay. It also works, if you're on one of the older Medtronic pumps, it works with the older Medtronic CGM systems. Gotcha. And this is quite literally something that was done, I don't know what the word is. Is it a consortium of people? Like, how do you think of it when you, is it a, um, a cabal? Are you guys witches? Like, what is it, <laughs> what is it exactly? Like, how did this, how did this begin? I the story started long before I ever got here, and it's a web of people. In the most simplistic of 
forms, and uh, it'd be too hard to name everybody who's been involved. But basically, people across the nation were frustrated with where the state of diabetes gear was, that it wasn't collecting information for the patient, that it was residing in silos separate from each other and not being integrated. And so people started taking action. Smart people who had the capabilities of, and I use the term hacking because that's what comes to mind for most people, um, but not hacking in a nefarious way. Hacking as in, I know my information is in here. I just want to see it. I want to use it to better. Basically, all these people across the country were all working on separate parts that all ended up through the wonders of internet, finding each other, and they all moved closer together. Right. So um, people who are working on understanding the Dexcom and making that more available before Share was around right. met with the people who were decoding the pumps and um, people who were doing algorithms. And they all started to form together till eventually um, these closed loop uh Components were all close together. No kidding. Where my involvement came in was my daughter um, was on Omnipod for about a year and a half after diagnosis and was doing great with it. And then she started high school. And when she started high school, she told me, Mom, I want to wear a tubed pump. And I said, well, why do you want to wear a tubed pump? This is the opposite of where most kids go. She right. said, I want my diabetes to be more visible. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's an odd thing to request at high school time, but I'll go with it. And I said, well, I've been stalking the Internet, and I saw that these really smart people over here who are working on this open APS system, will it's on an older pump, and I'm going to have to get an older tube pump. So if I could find that, maybe I could get two birds with one stone and automate some insulin delivery, and that might help make our lives easier. Right. Um, so that's what, that's how I ended up here was that my daughter wanted a tube pump. I knew I was going to have to buy a used one, mine as well. But the problem at the time was that the used pump, um, system, this open EPS system at the time was really bulky and would require a lot more than a teenager was willing to give it time and attention to right. at the time it's gotten better. So I was looking for small open APS systems and I was searching the internet frantically going, somebody must have worked to miniaturize this. Mm -hmm. And that's when I came across loop, which is a different system than open APS, but conceptually still the same automated insulin delivery based off your CGM readings. So when I saw that it fits on a phone and it's a really small, sleek form factor, I thought, yeah, I could do that. And when I got there and found where the project was, didn't have a whole lot of information about how to build it. So I spent a lot of time with Google and uh, putting myself out into uncomfortable spaces of trying to figure out how to build an app onto a phone when I've previously never done that. Mm -hmm. And um, with some help of some very nice people on the internet who answered my questions and Google, I got it built. And I was so excited and it worked so well for us that my involvement that I committed to as a kind of pay it forward movement is that I would write the documentation so that other people could come after me and be successful with it. So you're the translator. You, you, took, yes. you took complicated, technical, almost geeky and weird and turned it into something my brain can absorb. Yep. Is that what's at the loop kit? dot github dot whatever dot loop for yeah is even that is that that's even <laughs> even that i wanted to simplify it so it's it's loop docs dot org l o o p d o c s dot org l o o p i'm gonna write to it d o c s dot o r g and the entire it's really you know honestly i totally get it like when you when you come into something technical from the first start, as soon as you tell somebody you're going to build an app onto your iPhone, half the audience leaves the room and goes, I can't do that. And what I promise you is that you absolutely can. It is really, really not as, ha as hard as it seems. It's super, super difficult. My understanding here would be that this is not, I mean, you know, it, this is not a medical device company, right? That's giving you this, basically an algorithm that's going to tell your CGM you're know, going to tell your pump what to do with the, the information from the CGM. So no one can take responsibility for this. If you do this, it's, it's on you right now. It's, it's do it yourself in the most 
most meaningful way. You are doing it yourself. No one is helping you if something goes wrong. It's all on you. It's a decision you're making on your own. And it says that very much, right? I'm just seeing now. It's the first time I'm looking at, at loopdocs.org. It says you take full responsibility for building and running the system and you do so at your own risk. So if you want to get involved in this right now, Katie's going to tell us now about how to get it set up because, and I know everyone who listens is going to be thrown off by this. I'm going to try it. And, <laughs> and that, trust me, Katie, you have no idea. Everybody's just like, no, Scott said he was scared and he can't do it. And trust me, I am scared and I can't do it. But I think that by having Katie on the podcast, I now have a Sherpa that I can bug. I'm going to figure out how to do this and then I'm going to report back to you guys how I did it. And then I'm going to report back to you if I like it and whether or not we're going to stay with it or not. Because Katie, while I believe that this is incredibly important for the large majority of people uh, with type 1 diabetes, I think they're going to have results that they've just never seen before. We already have really good results. So if this improves my life, then I'm all for it, by the way. Like I'm not, I have no I have no ego about this. I don't need to be making decisions about temp basal increases and temp basal decreases like, you know, throughout the day. I don't care uh, if I would like it to just work. And so yeah. I'm super excited to try it. Well, that's, that is, you know, you, you just said something that kind of triggered in me a, a funny part that it took me a long time. We've been looping for two and a half years, roughly. And I've had an evolution in how I appreciate the system. When we got on it, um, we were fairly low carb only because it was the only way we slept at night. We, we just, you know, we were going through an evolution. We were only a year and a half in. It's a teenager. She's changing. We're changing. It was very, very hard. Yeah. So we got on loop and it was at the time we were mostly focused on A1C and blood sugar control and all of that kind of mindset. And then she became a teen and she wanted more independence and I wanted more independence. I didn't want to keep talking to her about diabetes. This was silly. That's just, we had a life to live. And what looping has done is, is made me realize just how much potential damage I was headed into with navigating that very complex transition of an independent type one teen. And Loop gave me back the ability to understand how to let her live her life and how capable she was and how she could do this. And that um, the other part it relieved for me is part of the reason I was doing so much help on it was I felt like if I shifted that responsibility that she was asking for, even though she was asking for it, I still felt a huge, enormous guilt that I was somehow saddling her with now this enormous responsibility and seeing loop work for her literally like a, like a, like a nanny, like a, a personal assistant that carries the umbrellas of the rich and famous stars at, you know, the movie festivals kind of thing. Like who, who, who can afford that? That's how loop has been for us is that it's this umbrella carrying personal assistant for her that makes that shift over so much easier. Yeah. Insulin concierge. I'm, yes, I'm gonna that's go. a great, that's a great term for it. And patent, so for patent us, pending, Katie, patent pending. I, I think you should. <laughs> that's your new, that's a new hashtag. You should, you should, should do that because it really, it redefined how our relationship was. And it took a lot of diabetes conversations off the table, which I'm so grateful for. And it wasn't at the expense of good A1C results or all of that kind of stuff. It was less effort, less lows, great A1Cs and less conversations. It was win, win, win all the way around. Yeah. So we have, I, so here's where my excitement lies. As I sit here and just look at this image that you guys have up on the screen of, of the, the loop app on an iPhone. So I'm not, even though there are a couple of people who like to say that I have a lot of ego and I, I I'm brash about like how well we're doing. What I'm saying here is I've gotten this figured out. My daughter doesn't go over about 150, 170 more than about twice a day. She doesn't get dangerously low more than maybe about once a year. You know, we don't get under 70 very often. She's mostly between 70 and 120. We have a lot of stability. But it's come through these things that I'm now realizing as I'm staring at the algorithm. There are these things that the algorithm understands mathematically that I understand 
in English. I don't know if that makes sense or not. And yeah. so, and and so I'm super excited to see the feedback from the app as far as like active insulin, insulin delivery, and 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 glucose levels because I actually think that this app can take me farther in my understanding than I am. And I really thought I was about at my peak, honestly. I didn't think there was much more I could understand about this. But seeing this information, I think I can mine a lot out of it and 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 really go on to be able to describe to people who don't have this app my ideas, but in better detail and maybe more easy detail to understand. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. So this is good. Um, Okay, so let's go through a couple of things. I need a Dexcom. I have that. I need Omnipod because it works with Omnipod now. I have that. And then I need something called a Riley link. And as soon as you say that in the past, my brain would go, okay, I'm out. Forget it. I don't want that, <laughs> right? But, a, yeah. but, but let's, let's make it. Let's take away Riley Link. And I don't know. Did you see uh, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse by any chance? No, I haven't. Fantastic <laughs> movie. You really have to make time. Uh, in that, one of the Spider-Man men, Spider-Men's, one of the guys <laughs> calls something electronic a goober. He says, there's always something like this in every one of my problems. I just call them all goobers. So let's call the Riley Link a goober. Okay. And so, <laughs> so the pump has to get information from the CGM. And your phone needs to talk to everything. The problem is, how does a phone talk to an insulin pump? It talks through the goober. So that's it. The goober is the bridge. The Riley link is the bridge. Don't be scared by it. It's a thing that makes a connection. In the future, there'll be a there'll be some the I guess the Bluetooth pods, right? When for Dash comes out, and then you guys will come out with something where that's right in the app, and then the Riley link will be gone at some point, right? Yeah. So uh, the DIY Katie says the Riley link is necessary because the pump speaks one language and your CGM and phone speak a different language. Gotcha. Your, your phone and your um, CGM are speaking Bluetooth. They're, they're over there speaking that one language. Your pump is speaking with radio. And so those two languages need a translator. And that's what the Riley link does is it bridges or translates between those two different languages. So, um, what Tidepool Katie's hat is saying is that the next phase of looping will be when you don't need that translator and that the pump is speaking Bluetooth and the phone is speaking Bluetooth and your CGM is speaking Bluetooth. You don't need a translator anymore. Okay. And so the phone will be able to directly communicate with both devices. And so Tidepool Loop's development is focused on um, insulin pumps that have an eye pump designation and Bluetooth capabilities built in. And can I ask Tidepool Katie a question real quick? Sure. Om Omnipod's all for this, right? Like I've spoken to them. They're super excited to have a relationship with Tidepool. They are incredibly supportive and kudos to them for recognizing um, a community need and stepping up and partnering with Tidepool to do that. I, I am as a, uh, parent of a T1D actively involved in the DIY community, incredibly heartened by the commitment they've made with Tidepool to bring that forward. Yeah, because at some point, so that people understand, you know, w let's say that we don't, I, obviously, Katie's not going to tell me timelines and because you need to be able to hit timelines and they're a company and all that stuff. But let's just make up a day and say that a year from now, Tidepool is going to have this set up so you don't need your Gruber and it's just going to talk to the Bluetooth pods, right? Omnipod might not be ready with their horizon system by then, but you can use, you'll be able to use basically Tidepool's algorithm with Loop to do that. If one day or when one day, excuse me, Omnipod comes out with their horizon, you get to decide. You get to use their algorithm, then try the Loop algorithm and say, well, listen, I, this one works better for me. I'm going to use this one. Omnipod completely okay with that. For those of you who are more newly diagnosed and have not been around diabetes for a decade or more, like, like I have, that's unheard of for a company to just be like, hey, you know what? If this works better for you and it's not from us, we don't care. Just we want you to be happy. 
that's insane. Like no one says that everybody always wants you tied down and locked into their thing. But this is the beginning of a whole new world. Super exciting. You should be genuinely jacked up that Omnipod's in on this because this is just, I think the beginning of a lot of good stuff. It's um, a monumental shift. Yeah. It, it really can't be oversold or overstated how big of a shift this is towards understanding the needs of the community and saying, I believe that the marketplace can absorb this. And decide for themselves too. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there's so many people that aren't on pumps. And I think there is a huge portion of people that aren't on pumps, not just for access issues, um, but also for choice issues mm -hmm. is that there's not a product that offers them a lot of choice. You're locked into one. And for Omnipod to say, hey, listen, we support our product. We support this new tide pool, whatever the system is. Like you say, they're into the interoperability and you can choose. And it's amazing. It really, it's, it's visionary and I'm completely supportive of that kind of vision. Um, I think tide pool has that vision too. Um, putting on a little bit of a toot their horn here, but really a nonprofit coming in and saying, we're going to take on this, this huge task. It really is a lot of work yeah. um, is, is amazing. And we have JDRS support for tide pool and Helmsley family trust is sponsoring um, a Jabe observational study for loop users in the U S that's going to provide a lot of insight into how the system's working for people. Right. Um, so I really look forward to kind of getting this project down the road and, and showing what it can do for a lot more people who perhaps like you mentioned at the start, look at building an app on their phone and say, that's just not for me. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get to the building part in a little bit, but I want to understand the using part first. I want to talk about the fun part before I talk about the hard part. <laughs> okay. So Katie, you don't know me, but when my daughter gets a plate of food, I look at it and I think that's 12 units and I'm going to break it down into an extended bolus. I'm going to do 30% now. I'm going to do the rest over half an hour. We're going to do a temp basil increase of 75% for an hour and a half. And that's that. And then if I'm right, great. And if I'm wrong, I adjust. I don't count carbs. I don't know my daughter's insulin to carb ratio. Um, I don't actually believe she has one. I don't believe any of us have one. I don't think there's a static insulin to carb ratio. And I don't think there's a static basal rate. I think all of that is some old timey BS way before this stuff was available to us before this technology. I think that was just the best people could do. And so how different is it going to be for me now when that plate of food comes out? Do I still get to guess at how much insulin it is or do I now have to count the carbs or what's the real, like, how does it work in a real life situation? Plate comes out. What do I do? Are you looking for delicious low-carb snacks and meals? Well, if you are, look no further than Real Good Foods. You ready? You want to hear what they have? Newest offerings, breakfast sandwiches that come in sausage and bacon. Of course, they have the chicken crust pizzas in personal supreme, personal pepperoni, and personal three cheese. Cauliflower crust pizza lovers, do not miss vegetable pizza, pepperoni pizza, margarita pizza, and cheese pizza. All of these come in delightful variety packs as well as one at a time. Have you had an enchilada for lunch lately? How about a pork enchilada, chicken enchilada, beef, cheese, or go crazy and get the mixed case? Real Good Foods also has real good poppers, bacon and cheddar, jalapeno, white cheddar, artichoke and cheese, and pepperoni and mozzarella. Maybe you want the chicken crust pizza, but you don't want the personal size? Go to the 7-inch. Again, cheese, supreme, and pepperoni. And if you go to their website, they got a pro tips area. Now, it's not like our diabetes pro tips. These are pro tips about how to cook the real good foods to perfection. Because real good foods want you to have a real good experience. Now, what could make your experience better? Better than having what I've just described you sent right to your home is having it sent to your home and paying 20% less. You'll see other coupon codes out there for real good foods for 10%, but boo-hoo, please. I told Real Good Foods for the Juice Box Podcast listeners, 20%. I demanded it, and so it will happen. Realgoodfoods.com. Use the offer code JUICEBOX. 
You can also find a link to Real Good Foods in the show notes of your podcast player and at juiceboxpodcast.com. Yeah, so for you, it it will be an adjustment because um, conceptually, the same statements that you just made all still apply. The difference is instead of knowing your insulin dosing, you're going to be refocusing on carb entries because you will have to use a carb ratio still. The whole um, premise of loop is that it makes a prediction of your blood sugar over the next six hours. And it says this is due to these factors. And one of those factors is your carb entry that you put into it. You say, I'm going to eat 12 grams. This is what um, based on my carb ratio and my insulin sensitivity and how much I have on board, this is where it's going to go. So the carb ratio is still an important part of making that prediction line. Um, that said, it's it's not an insurmountable shift because I actually was much like you prior to going into um, looping is that I knew these things needed extended basils and these things needed um, uh, or extended boluses, excuse me, um, or maybe these ones get an extra hit of insulin in two hours. Those kinds of things all translate. And instead now, instead of saying I need two units here, you get a carb ratio and you say, okay, if that previous thing needed two units and my carb ratio is one to 10, you just do it now as a carb entry instead of an insulin entry. On the, so it will it will be a shift. Okay. And on the image I'm looking at right here, there's like pictures of like, I see a taco, I see pizza, and I see candy. Do I tell it 15 grams and it's this kind of food? Yeah. See, that's the really cool part. Loop is the only system that does this. So for people who know, after, after you eat a pizza the first time, you know if you gave everything that you need all up front, you'd be low. Right. And you'd be incredibly high later. So what Loop does, it's got this really amazing ability to extend your carb absorption and say, this food's going to be a really long, slow burner. I'm going to be fighting the impact of this meal for six hours or four hours. You can tell it that. And the way that, um, as you described, you know your meals. You know that this meal impacts your daughter this way. And it might not be the same for everybody, but everybody kind of has a sense of, this particular plate of food kind of does this. And you can tell Loop that ahead of time and it will watch for you. So for pizza, for example, let's say you have 100 grams of pizza and you know that you need about 60 grams worth of that bolus up front and maybe 40 grams of that later. And you think of it in terms of your temp basils that you set and stuff. But you could say, ah, I need about two thirds of that up front and maybe a third of that whole insulin amount later. Loop actually has that built in. When you tell it your food is going to take a long time to absorb, it knows that if it throws all of the insulin on board early, you're going to go low early. So it will withhold some of that basal, some of that bolus recommendation because it's going to keep you from going low early. And by withholding it early, it also knows that you're going to need some later and it will automatically add that as high temp basils as soon as your danger of going low has passed. So it basically functions as an extended bolus for you when you push that pizza button. Yeah, so I have to tell you that I had, I'm so bad with names, but like two years ago, I had that that woman on, the girl who like made her own AP. Like you, you're going to know who exactly who she is. Like, Dana. Her, yes, Dana. I had Dana on and I had Dana's husband on. I did them in two different episodes. I don't know why I did that back then, but I thought it was interesting. And <laughs> what I took away from those episodes were... I just asked that. So I asked like a silly question. I was like, so how often does it bolus? She goes, really? Most of it's handled by basal rates. And I thought to myself, like, it was like somebody clonked me in the head and the light went off. And I was like, that makes so much sense. And that's it, that conversation helped me, you know, supercharge what I was already doing. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to use more basal. Um, as I look at this, my next question is, does it learn? Does it learn? Yes and no. It doesn't learn long term. Um, so, for example, it's not looking at your last day or week and say, oh, you look like you're running a little sensitive. It doesn't do that. But it does do some near term looks at how it itself has been doing. It looks at its own predictions. 
So basically it looks over the last hour um, and it says, how close was I? And if it thinks that it was really far off, it, it, it will um, wait the next 30 minutes of data and say, I've been off a little bit. I'm going to help you out a little bit more because something's going on in the near term and we'll fix that. So in the short term, yes, it looks at its data, but it's, it's very short term. Okay. In the long term, so um, there's this one thing you're talking about, like learning systems within Loop. There's a really incredible one within Loop that's um, called Insulin Counter Action Effects. It's a big name, but basically what it means is that Loop has a screen that you can tap on. And at the end of the meal, it will say, you told me this was a 50 gram meal. But actually, based on your blood sugar response and how it handled it, it actually hit you more like 63 grams. Oh. And so you can actually learn a lot from Loop when you look at your food at the end of the meal. You can go, wow, you know what? I see what it's saying. Based on my blood sugars, that meal treated me as if I was 80. So, you know, nutritional labels aren't right. And sometimes you're at a restaurant and you're like, I'm still trying to learn this meal. How, how much do I give up front? How do I how do I bolus this meal? Loop will provide that imp that impactful statement towards you or for you at the end of the meal and say, hey, that meal treated you like this. So the next time you go back to have that meal, you'll be better informed. So this is like a, a blown up idea behind all carbs aren't created equal. And, yes. And it's an extension of what I told you where I say I stay flexible. I put the insulin in, I see what happens, and then I stay flexible. So in for your knowledge, if I were to um, – do a you know do, do the regular pre bolus that we do you know as far as time goes and she, Arden starts eating and thirty minutes later I see a diagonal up arrow I do what I call stop the arrow I stop the arrow from from going up I use little bits of insulin to make a stop and then the next time I would say to myself and I preach it to people all the time you look at a meal and you think oh that's five units and then you later use a half a unit to correct it, well, then next time, don't look at the same meal and go, oh, that's five units. Say to yourself, that's five and a half units. Oh, you can't see me. I have my hands in the air going, yes, right. yes, yes, right. exactly. Is dynamic thinking is probably the biggest tool you have in your tool belt right. for successful. Um, Katie, I wish you knew what a moron I was. That that anything in life has struck me well is is absolutely a, a, a miracle, but that I figured this out, you have no idea that it was me. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like it, <laughs> this is not something I should have figured out. And I don't know how I think I, I, a lot of times give a lot of credit to writing on my blog for so long and wanting to help people and seeing that I had to find out what worked for me. And then I would wait months. I would never share anything right away. I'd like, let me make sure this is really valuable before I tell somebody about it. And then I would tell them about it and I kept building. And before I knew it, I realized I had like these like 10 basic tenets of how to keep a blood sugar stable. And I was like, wow, this is like a, a system. Like it, it's a way, like if I put it all together, it, it, it makes sense, you know? Um, and still, I swear, I really wish you knew me because that, it, that I figured anything out is just hilarious. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it is, it is absolutely huge to have a dynamic attitude. If it's, I always put it as, respond to the information you're seeing, not the information you thought. And so if you're seeing that a meal is actually treating you like 10 grams more than what you thought you had to give more, take that into account the next time. And if the people who are listening aren't thinking right now, trust what you know is going to happen is going to happen, then you have not been listening closely enough. Okay. So <laughs> you, ha you have to trust that what you know is going to happen is going to happen. You can't get high every morning at 8 a.m. and every morning at 7.45, think, oh, I hope it doesn't happen today. It's going to happen. Give yourself yep. insulin now, right? Like, yep. so, oh, I'm, now, see? All right, okay, Katie, let's calm down. Because I think we're coming up to the point where I'm going to get upset and sad. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so I see how it works. I see that my daughter will be able to, you know, count carbs and do things like that. That I also, by the way, believe wholly that people eat mostly the same thing over and over again. So it's not like you're counting carbs forever or trying to figure out how much insulin a meal is forever. Usually you eat about the same 20 or 30 or 40 things. Eventually you'll figure, figure them out. Well, I have to tell you, I am a day and a half into looping with Arden with her Omnipod. And so far, I'm adjusting. But I think I'm getting good at it. Do you have an Omnipod? Do you want one? 
Have you considered going to myomnipod.com forward slash juice box to get a free, absolutely free, no obligation demonstration pod sent right to your house? Do you know what the people at Omnipod call that? They call it a peck, a pod experience kit. Here's what happens. You go to the link, myomnipod.com forward slash juice box, and you put in your name and your address. And you say to the people at Omnipod, hey, people at Omnipod, send me out a demo. And they do, right in the mail. It's magical. Shows up at your house. Now, don't worry. It's not like a working pod. It's uh, an exact replica that doesn't, you know, have a cannula that goes in you. So you can actually put it on and try it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Just like a, it comes right to your house. You you say, hey, I think I'm going to put this uh, here. And it's on. Then you wear it. Now, here's the great thing about wearing a demo pod from Omnipod. And I've done this numerous times, actually. The great thing is, after you have it on for a little while, you forget it's there. Thing sells itself. They don't even need me. Oh, my God, Omnipod. Don't take the ads, please. Keep coming back. I'm just kidding. Omnipod loves us. We love Omnipod. And you will love Omnipod, too. Now, there's a link in your podcast player. There's links at juiceboxpodcast.com, or you can type it in, myomnipod.com forward slash juicebox. Takes about eight seconds. I mean, if you type really fast. Guys, listen, I'm just going to do the Dexcom ad here, and that way you can listen straight through to the end without any more advertisements. <clears throat> I'm almost ready. I'm getting ready. Do re mi fa so <clears throat> fa <clears throat> do re do 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 Dexcom. You want a Dexcom. You might not know you want it, or maybe you do know you want it. One way or the other, you want it. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. Here's what you're going to get when you have a Dexcom, a G6 continuous glucose monitor. You are going to get information. And as they say, information is what do they say about information there's a saying about hold on a second i know there's a saying about information hold on a second <clears throat> i got it right here oh there's 486 sayings about information oh, that's not helpful at all no that's not it huh oh that's kind of deep from albert einstein but not the one i was thinking of not that one <sighs> god no no, term DNA is like a computer. No. All right, maybe there's not a saying about information. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make one up right now. When you get the information back from your Dexcom, you make better decisions about your insulin. That's all. I, there's nothing else to say. That information can come to you with the Dexcom in a couple of ways. One way, share and follow. Available for iPhone and Android. You know what that means? Share and follow. Like there's an app. Share and there's a app. You know, share app, follow app. One of you probably like the person you love who has diabetes has to share up. And then another one of you, like a person who cares enough to pay attention to their diabetes, has the follow up. And then there you go. Their diabetes does something. It goes up, it goes down. It's trending in one way. It's trending in the other. It's moving. It's dancing. As you can tell, I'm making this episode late at night and I'm completely dopey. So just buy a Dexcom. Dexcom.com forward slash juice box. Links in your show notes and at juiceboxpodcast.com. You will not regret making the jump to continuous glucose monitoring with Dexcom. So here I am, I'm Scott, I'm standing in front of my microphone and I have ordered my Riley link, which is on back order. And by the way, if you know anybody who can help me with that, Katie, I would appreciate if you put in a good <laughs> word. And it's going to come to me. My goober is going to show up in the mail and there's other things I could probably be doing before it gets here. Is that true? Yes. You can do everything before it gets here, except actually loop. You can build the app. You can uh, get other things set up if you're ready for it. If you're a Night Scout user, you could get your Night Scout set up. You can um, you can do everything you can, except for turn on the Riley link and loop. Okay. And this is not going to get in the way, by the way, of my Dexcom share. That's still going to work fine. Everybody's going to be able to see that stuff. Totally. It's still, you still actually use your exact same Dexcom app. Your Dexcom alarms are all still the same. Basically what loop does is it eavesdrops on your Dexcom's communications. And so it doesn't interfere with your Dexcom. Okay. All right. So if you were me, what would you do first? If I were you, what I would do first is 
um, kind of conceptualize what your game plan is. Um, number one is get your computer up to date and also kind of let me take one step back. On my Instagram account, um, I do have a loop advent calendar that I did just kind of on this topic as I was trying to prepare the community with this is coming and here's a really small digestible day by day advent calendar of day one. Make sure your computer is up to date. Do you have Mojave Mac OS? I'm kind of explaining what starts to sound like technical stuff. Just, hey, make sure your computer's up to date. And it has to be a Mac. Is that right? It does have to be a Mac. Yes, it has to be a Mac running what they call Mojave um, operating Operating system, system. which is their latest one. Oh, I see your Instagram account. Look at you. You're delightful. Look at this. (laughs) Very nice. So, yeah, so you you can run through each of those admins day by day and just sort of take it in tiny digestible chunks and do each of those. Um, But basically, you prep your computer. And and this is the part that looks intimidating on the website, but it's actually not, is that each of these are natural stopping points. As I've tried to lay out the pages in the building the app section into natural stopping points. And so um, you prep your computer. Basically, you want to make sure your OS is up to date, your operating system, and that you download a free app from your app store that comes from Apple. It's called Xcode. And basically what Xcode is, is like you present that code for the application, for the loop application, and it compiles it all and builds it into a nice little package. You plug your phone into your computer and Xcode puts that app onto your phone. So you're literally downloading the loop code from us online and you're using a free app on your computer. You press like four buttons and the whole thing builds by itself. That's how easy it is. Fancy as F. Now, I have already, while Katie was saying that, even though I swear to you, I didn't know she was going to say it, I've already downloaded Xcode onto my computer. (laughs) <laughs> yes. All right, See, that's step one is you get that on. Um, it's actually a pretty big download. And believe it or not, that's the longest part of building the loop app is downloading that. Okay. And then I, so and then grab I, a cup of coffee and you're good. Okay. And I need a developer. Um, I have to be like an Apple developer, right? Because, yes. because, because for everyone listening, I am technically making my own iPhone app right now. And they're going to give you, obviously, all, you know, Loop gives you all of the instructions and the, you know, and the code and everything you need for it. But you have to do that because it remains your responsibility. And Yes. Right. And in the future, if I, I once everything's, you know, working the way we want it to work with Tidepool and everybody's got their OKs and their FDA clearances and everything like that, I'll just download this app from the App Store, I'm assuming, or download it from Tidepool.org or something like that. And it's going to go right on my phone. I'm not going to need to be a developer or have Xcode or anything like that. Is that right? Correct. The Tidepools project is basically taking um, the fundamentals of the DIY loop system and taking that through FDA approval. So um, the study is going to help solidify what needs to be done to make that app able to be distributed as a medical device under FDA approval through the App Store. So yeah, that's where the that's where the two projects between DIY and Tidepool Loop start to diverge is that concept of being able to download this on your app store on your iPhone and what needs to be done to make sure that all the FDA clearances are done. So yeah, so so Tidepool, Katie, eventually this is just gonna be check boxes and drop down boxes on an app. Yeah, the, what we envision is that you'll, as Tidepool, Katie, I'll speak now, um, is that you get to go to your endocrinologist, talk to them about your settings and your carb ratios and make sure that you have some reasonable settings. They prescribe Tidepool Loop for you. You have your components and you get to go to the app store with your prescription number and download it. Okay. Um, all right. Let me think. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm it's thinking. A, I, I, it's no, a huge world. No, I'm getting it. It's coming in my head. I'm figuring it out. So, it's going to look. It's going to look like a lot. But Katie has, as a person who's done this, not knowing what she was doing and getting what would probably be the best expert advice that she could as she was going along, has turned it into the simplest steps you could possibly have. Now, um, 
I'm going to do this and, and I'm going to, whenever my Riley link comes, I'm going to, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be set up and I'm going to go and I'm going to try it and see what happens. What is my expectation for a person who lives between 70 and 120? A, like in my mind, I think my first excitement is going to be sleeping soundly overnight. Is that, is that the simplest win that I get from loop? Do you think? Yes, it, for sure. Sleeping through the night is, <laughs> It's unbelievable. I, I say I didn't know what I had started missing until I started sleeping again. Um, good example: last night, my daughter was out to the movies with her friends and needed a ride home at one thirty in the morning. It was a drive-in, double feature, far away, and so I was up until one thirty in the morning. I can't even tell you how tired I was because I've gotten used to getting a full night of sleep all the time now. It really was daunting to have to go back to the olden days of missing hours of sleep. Right. Um, You're making people cry right now. You don't realize <laughs> that, but there's like thousands and thousands of people listening and they're like weeping in their cars and while they're working out at the grocery store and stuff like that. So that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm a, di- I'm a different person when I sleep. I'm a nicer parent. I'm a better spouse. There's, there's like a, a lot that goes with sleep. Yeah. There's, um, there's plenty of conversations in this podcast where I, I tell a story about I was so exhausted at one point and I didn't know it. And then I went away for a week without my daughter and about the third or fourth day into the trip. I thought to myself, oh my God, this is me. Like, I remember having thoughts like this, yes. and, you know, like, and, yes. and being clear headed and, and, and that sort of a thing. So that's my, that's my excitement. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Say I decide I like loop for sleeping, but I want to just stick with what I do for eating. Can I do that? hundred percent. You can turn, um, loop has one slider. It's super simple. It's called uh, open loop or closed loop. If you open your loop, Loop will let you just get the recommendations, but not automatically put them in. So it will use your scheduled basils, just like your normal pump therapy would. It would just give you your basils that you have programmed in, and you can choose to deliver the insulin any way that you want to. You can enter the carbs, and you can choose your particular um, bolus for it. So let's say during the day you want to say, ah, you know what? I still am working out my carb ratios. I'm still figuring them out. I just kind of want to do it one meal on a convenient Saturday and see how my settings are. But in the meantime, during the week while she's at school, I just want to keep to our old paradigm until we can get to, for example, right now I'm thinking summer, you know, hey, summer, I'll be home. This will be easier. Okay. Absolutely. You can go to school, keep it in open loop. They can enter their carbs, provide whatever bolus number they want, and loop won't be taking any extra action. And then when you come home at night, you can go ahead before you go to sleep at night, you can turn on the closed loop switch, you just toggle it right over, and it'll be looping overnight then. And so being an open loop would show me what the algorithm is thinking, because it would say to me, hey, right here, if I was you, I'd do a temp basal increase. of Absolutely. Every, every Every five minutes across the top, you'll see the recommendation update. And I'll say, this is the new basal rate I think you should set. So you'll be able to see if it's greater than or less than where your existing settings are. And you'll see the prediction too as well. You'll see the prediction go up and down. And I think that's one of the first things that kind of freaks people out as they see the prediction. They're like, oh, do I treat a low now because it's chosen six hours, I'm going to be low. That prediction line is always as if no other actions are taken. Mm. And that's the whole thing is that loop is going to take actions to prevent or change what is in the future. So if you see a low coming in six hours, you don't need to treat it right now. Loop's going to be treating it for the next six hours and staving that off. And so the thing never happens. This is like a time travel movie. In a time travel movie, sometimes they show you what's going to happen in the future, but then the people in the past make better decisions and the future never happens. Yes, that's exactly what Loop is doing for you. Is it saying, oh, wow. And Katie, by the way, now you know why the podcast is popular, because I can take incredibly complex things and turn them into moron talk that everybody can understand. (laughs) I, I have I have tried to do that with loop building instructions. So I, I think you're I think you're my kind of people. I'm I like, like that. a seven year old in my mind. So okay, so I also just realized I might be more of and people are gonna laugh because I don't think I knew this about myself. I think I'm more of a diabetes geek than I thought I was. Uh, because when you said you could open the loop and then see what it was thinking, that to me takes me back to 
back before CGM, when I used to test Arden at all these wacko times, then my endo would be like, why did you test 45 minutes after she ate? And I was like, don't you want to know what's happening? And, and she yeah. was like, no. And I was like, no, I think we should know. You, you know, like, I'm going to keep testing. She'd always be like, I don't understand how your A1Cs are like this, but you're showing me all these weird blood sugars that don't make sense. I'm like, because I'm tracking what her blood sugar is doing so I can make better decisions. Yes. I, I really think, I really think that with six months with Loop, I might have to have my head made larger, not for my ego, that one person that left the review, but for <laughs> my knowledge of diabetes, because I really think this is going to just kick it into another stratosphere. It really, it's a truth serum. It really tells you a lot about your settings, your understanding, how you conceptualize um, reacting to things. For example, a lot of people, as they're getting used to this, are um, impatient with insulin they'll say, oh, I, I don't want to wait it out. And they'll rage bolus or, um, or they think they're rage bolusing, but they're actually not even bold enough with insulin, you know, and they, they say, oh, I'm so scared of going low. Having the feedback from a loop constantly telling you, hey, here's what I would do. And here's, oh, by the way, your meal absorbed 20 grams more than you initially told me it would be and lasted. It also tells you the time and took two hours longer to digest than you expected. Yep. That kind of information is so powerful to relieving the diabetes burden because it's fine tuning your expectations. And when you change your expectations for going into it and say, yeah, you know what? It's okay that this meal treats me as 65. I feel comfortable. Something has helped me learn better. Mm. Katie, I'm so proud right now, and I don't know if you did that on purpose or if that was by mistake. Either way, I'm proud. You said bold with insulin, which is really the whole tagline for this podcast. It, that's my hashtag. Um, it came from here. If you don't know that, I'm just thrilled that those words are somehow in your brain, which means it's getting out in the to the stratosphere. And if you did know that, I appreciate you listening. Well, I actually heard that from um, a podcast interview you had with uh, T1 Junebug because she's a good friend of mine for several years. And um, I saw her use that phrase and I thought, yes, that rings true. People are um, scared to dynamically think they'll see the same blood sugar rise, the same blood sugar rise, the same blood sugar rise, and yet say, but the label told me it should be 10 grams or my endo told me it should be this. And and stringing that along and, and being a more dynamic thinker and being bold with the insulin, taking the insulin you need for what you've seen over and over again is, is really good dynamic thinking. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, I, I was just speaking with a mom last night and I said to her, you have to, I said, I know that, you know, I, I haven't given you any advice here because I don't give advice. I just pass on my own stories. But I told her, I was like, I can give you this one piece of advice. I said, I would stop thinking about all the things that people have told you to do and told you not to do and just apply a little more common sense to this. Yeah. You know, like, like stop overthinking it. Your blood sugar is high. You need more insulin. That's yeah. Kind of yep. just, I, I'm down to like, if I see something online, people are like, look at this graph. And blah, I go and I type more insulin and then I hit enter because I can't, I can't explain it anymore. We do it here enough, but sometimes I'm just like, how can you look at a 300 blood sugar and think, I don't understand what's wrong. I don't know what to do. Yeah, of course <laughs> yes. you know what's wrong. You didn't use enough insulin. And so, right. Ugh. It's not going to be, it's not going to be the same and it's not going to be perfect. My daughter gets nervous around certain situations and her blood sugar spikes. Um, and Luke doesn't know that's coming. Nobody gave it an announced warning. Nobody gave me an announced warning or my daughter. And um, so there's ways that you can um, help correct that faster as well. You can still override and give more insulin and give a correction. Um, there's uh, a lot of information built into loop to help you with that decision making process. If you choose to take that interactive step, if you're the type of person that just says, you know what, I'm happy. I'm happy with a little wider range and I just want less cognitive burden of interacting with it today and, or long-term you can let loop do that as well. It's, it has all the information put in there that it will meet you at your comfort level and, and help you make the most of where you are. I'm going to say something real quick and then I'm going to ask you a question. What I'm going to say first is for everybody listening who has come to count on the podcast, I just want you to know that even if I do this and stay with it, I think it's only going to enhance my ability to talk to those of you who aren't doing this. So don't worry about that. Uh, I, I, the thing I want to ask 
are you comfortable telling me what your daughter's A1C is on loop? Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, she uh, started loop at four, no, four, nine, I think. Um, and again, we were low carb, heavily, intensively, lots of work, lots of communications, lots of texting, lots of last sleep. So um, we were working hard. She is now at a five, six. What was our last one? Five, six, I think. And she is as high carb as they come, has become a vegetarian. So we have no, no like low carb meals ever. And uh, she is completely independently operating and bolusing and doing everything through loop. I have not told her how to split a bolus in, I'm going to say a year. Uh, she is completely handling all of that just by loop recommendations and putting it into loop. I, I, um, I hope I don't tear up. It has changed everything. Um, I now have the space reclaimed for what used to be diabetes conversations. I now hear about her friends at school. I hear about the things she wants to do. I hear about going to the beach and can I go on a date? And I hear the things that I'm supposed to be hearing and they're not laced with, don't forget um, to bring diabetes into this conversation. I don't have to do that. Yeah. Don't forget. Did you, I, I start too many sentences with, did you, or, yes. do, you know, can you tell me, or what does the say, um, there's, there's still, and we, and listen, I'm going to be honest with you. We don't talk about diabetes around here very much, um, because we really are, we just have a rhythm. Like, I don't know another way to put it, but at the same time, it still happens. And if it could be less, that'd be amazing. And if it's less for me, then I imagine it's going to be much less for a lot of other people. Um, I have to say that this is, this is the future that I've always imagined. I always thought it was going to come more in like 2020, like, right. That was my kind of estimation. Yeah. Um, and I was always happy with that because I thought, well, that's still a couple of years before Arnold will go away to college. So I'm okay with that. But just the idea that it could happen sooner it's got me. Gross. It's amazing. I'll give you a, an example. So when my daughter goes to summer camp, we always talk, well, do you bring loop? Do you not bring loop? And, um, you know, I realized that sending her to camp with a non FDA device puts a little bit of burden, um, and ask on those camp staffers. And, you know, so I'm, I'm cognizant of maybe we don't loop when we go to camp and certain camps even don't allow it, but our particular camp is supportive. And, um, but it's always, it's always, it's funny. She goes to camp because she doesn't want to feel different, right? She's got her, her crew, her tribe, yeah. and she doesn't feel different around them, but she does feel different. She perceives this. If we talk about it in April or May of going to camp using loop, because she's worried none of her other friends will be using the loop. And so we have this conversation every summer for the last two summers about whether or not she's going to loop there. And every summer she goes into it telling me, well, I'll probably take it off while I'm there. I'm taking it now, but I'll probably turn it off because I don't want to be different. And she never turns it off. And she comes back to the pickup station after two weeks away and all of her friends are around her. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's like a little gaggle. There'll be five teenagers with her that I'll go, um, Katie, can you get us on loop too? Yeah. <laughs> we want to use it too. And so, um, you know, I kind of take that as my bellwether of how good the system is or isn't, is if adults weren't involved and parents weren't involved, what would the kid decide to do? Yeah. Because I think that's a really important aspect is the informed decision-making process involving the kid and letting the kid be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And so when she comes back from camp and there's five kids with her saying, um, can you help us? <laughs> we want to do that too. I think it's a good sign that the system is well designed and helpful as opposed to an extra burden that just isn't useful. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Can I pick your brain about something else as a, as, yeah. as a person who's obviously given a lot of their time and effort to the diabetes community? Uh, I think that overall that shows the, your concern for people who you know who have type one and people who you don't know who have type one. I, and I feel similarly. Um, I don't ever have this feel fear, but I know some people do, that if you take away the idea of how to manage diabetes, that if the technology is not available, you'll be lost. And <clears throat> I don't talk about that here because I think it's silly to make somebody 
struggle and cry and be upset and exhausted just so they can understand how a bolus works. Um, I don't think you need to do that. I have dedicated this podcast to fast forwarding people through that whole process, but I'm now I'm projecting into the future, right? Um, I, I, I'm talking privately and have been for weeks and months with a mom of a little girl who is so newly diagnosed that she's honeymooning to the point where she doesn't need insulin some days. And it's really going on for a long time. And I'm imagining her right now and I'm thinking I could put this on her and she would never know all of the tragedy that I've lived through and that so many other people have lived through, like figuring out diabetes. And is that a good thing? Obviously it is. It seems like it is at the onset, but what would happen if that technology, like if her insurance changed or something happened, it was just taken from her. Do you think that she'd be gobsmacked blindsided by what diabetes really is without the technology? Have you ever thought about that? Like, I'm just interested in your, in your, like off the top of your head thoughts. Oh yeah. I think, uh, I think people would be, if it, if it disappeared from us for us, would it be impactful? Would we notice it? Absolutely. Um, I'll give you an example. We, um, we switched to Omnipods because we were having problems with uh, sites on Neos and Medtronics. Um, so one day during a particularly painful, yet again, cannula failure kink kind of issue day, um, she had to turn off loop. Uh, we were we, just perfect storm. CGM fails, uh, Neo fails. We were flying blind and she had to give herself a shot for the first time in two and a half years almost. And, uh, I was away from home. She was home alone. And I said, can you do it? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I think so. And she did. And it was daunting and all of that. But that said, you do what you got to do. And um, I don't believe in keeping the covers on the couches and not using the things that are great in life just because something might fail later. I don't. I don't like it when there's fear mongering around advancement. And, and I think it happens a lot. I think when Dexcom first came out, there were people running around going, you're not going to understand your diabetes. And I think there are people that tell people, you know, you have to have a uh, do shots for a year before we give you a pump. I think all of that, and I'll bleep this out later. I think all of that is bull Okay. I think that you need to understand how insulin works in your body and then you're good. And it yeah. seems to me, that this algorithm is going to understand how insulin works in my body. Now, should I still understand it? I should, but I, but what I'm foreseeing in the future is, is that you're going to go on this and right on the screen, you're going to see what's happening and you will learn how insulin works in your body without ever having to fumfer around with it. The algorithm is not just going to keep your blood sugar where it wants to be, where it wants it to be. It's going to teach you how it's doing it visually. Yes. That's what I'm seeing here. So now you'd have to translate that back to a pump without a loop or injections if you got stuck in that situation, but you wouldn't be starting from zero. You'd actually have a fairly fast forwarded understanding of it. You're going to put this podcast out of business. Uh, Tidepool, you're going to need to hire me if I can't get downloads on this podcast <laughs> anymore because you're loop. Seriously, if loop puts my podcast out of business, Katie, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it, I tell you what it really does is it's like a true serum for the assumptions that people had about their diabetes understanding is oh, they're um, always wrong guys. You're always wrong. Everybody. I'm sorry, Katie, I cut you off. Everybody who sends me an email is like, I think this is what's happening. I'm like, that's not what's happening. Your basil's wrong. You, you, you yeah. know, like, like no one ever really knows because it's, 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 um, it's this false idea. And I had somebody on recently who said this thing that just struck me he said, you know, if you put a pencil in your back pocket, then you rob a bank. Pencils don't cause bank robbery. But, yes. but somebody thinks it does. Somebody sees this cause and effect and they just say, I saw this, then this happened. So that thing must have been the reason why. And we make that d mistake so often in diabetes, it's not funny. And it, it really, it's such a true serum is that people get on and when things are automated, that means it's using the same assumptions you've put into it. And when those assumptions show, hey, you're trending high or you're trending low consistently. People are like, what? But these numbers were set in stone. I, these were fine. I was doing fine. And what they don't realize is, no, you weren't doing fine. 
you were you were taking a lot of manual actions to make it fine or you were adjusting in other ways that you hadn't realized. And so um, one of the, it, it, two, two wrongs can make a right in diabetes. You can overlook things very easily by having two wrongs equaling a right. Yes. There are so many times that people are having a good outcome at 3 p.m. that's really just from a mistake at noon and they have no idea. Yes. It's yes. really, it really is. Once you see it, it, I, I joke about that it's a little old of a reference, but once you see it, it's it's like at the end of the Matrix when the bullets stop moving for Neo and he's just kind of like walking in between yeah. them and moving away. Like once you can see it, it's fascinating. Well, you know? and Loop provides that visual that visual in- interface to be able to see it. So one good example. So for example, let's take your correction factor or your insulin sensitivity. A lot of people have a wild guess at that, but they don't really know and they haven't tested it. Um, when you see your blood sugars on an automated system kind of roller coastering up and then down and up and then down, you're also probably going to see what I call lightning bolts of temp basils. So you'll get a lot of temp basal action trying to c- correct a rising blood sugar and then suddenly you'll turn low and or not low, but you'll start heading down and then you'll come back up and you kind of get on this oscillation, a roller coaster. That's usually because your ISF is um, needs to be a higher number. So I don't, I'm avoiding using the word weak or strong because people have different impressions of what that word means in terms of where the actual number needs to go. But if you had put in, uh, if you told loop each unit of insulin will drop my blood sugar 50 points and you start seeing that roller coaster pattern, that's a really good indication that your, your value of 50 actually might need to be up near 70 or a different number higher than 50 because you've basically undersold insulin to loop. It's actually doing more than it expected. And so some of these things about loops ability to inform you of your diabetes assumptions are really like strikingly obvious. As soon as you start using loop, as you start seeing that and you go, Holy smokes, yeah. that's, uh, uh, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So I have a couple of just like, like fast, pace questions here. So first day of a Dexcom sensor in the first few hours, I don't really lean on it for like, you know, I don't want to put a time on it, but until it's right, like until it's soaked in and it's really working. So do I just go into open loop during that time? Is that what you yes. do? Is that what you, you do? Could, you could. No, it's not what I do, but yeah. you could. Um, my daughter uh, basically usually ends up changing her sensor at night, which is I think the worst time to change a G6. And so the whole first night, we basically get a lot of false lows or compression lows. And what we have found is that basically loop still does okay. It doesn't, um, and in essence, what happens is that you get some higher basal rates, you get some suspensions, and they all even out over the course of the night to be okay. Um, it hammers out the, the kinks and gets it gets you. Yes. Flat. Yeah. And then when she wakes up in the morning, finally the Dexcom is back on an even path and everything's fine. So for the first 12, I for us, it's, you know, it will depend on the person, but for us, the first six hours of a new sensor are kind of jaggedy. Um, if it's really far off, we can go into open loop mode and it's no problem. Okay. What about different insulins? Do, do people see different or does it not like we use a pager? That's going to be good. Uh, you, you, you setting me up on that one. Um, yeah, actually within loop, we have three different, um, insulin models. So there's four, but, um, three are based on the type of insulin and the user. So there's a rapid acting adult, which is like uh Novolog, Humalog, um, for adults, there's one setting for children, and then there's another setting for FIASP. So, um, and then each of those settings basically describe how the insulin curve works. If you, after knowing your daughter and kind of looking at how things work, say, wow, on our particular insulin, we think it peaks at this amount of minutes. That's actually something you can customize within your loop to say it peaks at this time. We have numbers put in there that are based on the published data of how these things behave in clinical trials and all of the published data. But if you find that for you, your diabetes is different, you can actually tweak and customize some of those things. Okay. And so a lot of it's customized. Like for instance, can I pick her target blood sugar? 
A hundred percent. Cause that's, awesome. that's the one thing I would just not like, I, I don't, I would, I want to sleep more, but not at the, you know what I mean? Not, 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 not to say that I don't know what the, um, the Medtronic um, artificial pancreas, but it's like at 120 or 140 or something like it had mm-hmm. a target up there. Like I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to make that decision. I'd say out of all of the feedback I consistently hear on the development of closed loop in the commercial market, that target set point is, is the, the real critical piece for a lot of people. Okay. And on this one, you can set it anywhere you want. We have people setting it that are, um, ultra low carbers and have a single number target that they really aim for. And there's other people that are doing a much wider range and are, so yeah, it's totally up to you what you want to set it at. Okay. Is it my, so my last kind of nuts and bolts question is, do I tell it when a new pump's going on? Like how much does it care about how old the infusion set is? Um, if you're on Omnipod, it keeps the same, uh, standard change cycle as Omnipod. It will alert you. It's, um, well at 72 hours, Omnipod tells you this pod's, done but at 80 hours it really makes you change it and it says you're done done um loop has the same things and you can set a custom notification for when you want it to tell you hey it's coming up what about this here's another i said i wasn't going to ask any money nuts and bolts questions but i have one more what if a cannula like comes out a little bit and i'm getting some of my insulin but not all of my insulin does it know that what's that it's not seeing what it thinks it should be seeing that's a great question and the answer is No, in a way, is that basically if it thinks you delivered a whole unit, but the cannula actually only managed to get half of that under your skin and absorbed, Mm -hmm. loops calculations will be a little off. It will think that you have more insulin than you do. And so what you can do is there's a couple different options. You can open your loop until that discrepancy wears off and you get it all changed and figured out. You can open loop and just go back to normal pump therapy. Or you can enter in a fake carb where you say, hey, I'm going to eat five grams, bolus me for these five grams. And basically you're tricking the algorithm to think your blood sugar will rise because you were eating. And so therefore it will offset some of that. It's a more advanced technique and people kind of start using that in those situations once they become a little bit experienced. Mm -hmm. Um, But that is an option as well to kind of say, hey, I'm going to need extra insulin that you think is there, but wasn't there. We call that stuff ninja level. So, um, yeah. okay. So, all right. So here's what I'm going to do because we've been going at it for a while and I want to make this digestible for you. We're going to stop. I'm going to say, thank you. I'm going to ask you after I get this back, will you come back on and, and talk with me after I've been using it for a little bit? I would love to. Okay. I think that would be great. Excellent. And can I have an ask of you? I guess so, but I'm not taking my pants off. So, <laughs> so the, the, the ask is, is that um, I want to make this system better for everybody else and make sure it goes there, you know, is able to incorporate all of these things like uh, yeah. soliciting impact feedback. And um, that JAB loop observational study is a really important part. And it's the best way that people have to pay this forward and provide meaningful impact. I would love it if people would take a look at the study and donate their data. It can all be done from home. It's super convenient. It's very fast and easy. And it provides important user information, um, especially from new users who are like just getting on the loop. You're asked questions about like, how did the setup go? How hard was it? Are you technical? Are you not technical? How do you view diabetes? All of that's going to paint this incredibly awesome mosaic of what kind of user experiences have been and just take the system into a better place. Okay. So when um, uh, we've talked about it here, but the next time we talk, I'll give direct, you will be able to give direct instructions to people about how to donate their, their data to that. That'd be great. All right. Excellent. Okay, I don't want anybody to worry. I still understand how to be bold with insulin after a day and a half of looping. As a matter of fact, that loop, just like Katie said, is showing me things that I don't think I understood. But I'm starting to, and then I'll be back here to report to you. So whether you want to loop or not loop, or Lulu skip your loo, or just keep doing what you're doing, or do what I've been doing for years, which might be what I'm doing again. I don't know how long we're going to do this loop thing. We're trying it. I can't do a podcast if I don't understand looping. I mean, it's 2018. Wait, is it 2019? Wait, I mean, it's 2019. It is so late at night here. I'm I'm out of my mind.
I hope you found this episode interesting and what Katie had to say intriguing. I certainly did. It got me off my butt to try looping. And as soon as I know what I think, I'll report it back here.